students this is your biology teacher ranjana kanojia and today we are going to discuss chapter 6 life processes now we are going to discuss heterotrophic nutrition as we have discussed in our previous lecture that what are heterotrophs so today we will recall it in short heterotrophs are organism that cannot manufacture their food by their own because they do not contain chlorophyll pigment so they depend upon another organism like producers plants and some other animals for getting their nutrition or for getting their food plants contain chlorophyll pigment so they can perform photosynthesis and manufacture their food by their own as heterotrophs depend upon another organism so this type of nutrition is known as heterotrophic mode of nutrition now on the basis of feeding habits heterotrophic nutrition is divided into three categories first is holozoic second is saprophytic and third one is parasitic first we will discuss holozoic mode of nutrition so animals in this type take in solid food and break it down into smaller molecules inside their body this type of nutrition takes place in amoeba and other animals next we will discuss saprophytic mode of nutrition so saprophytic mode of nutrition is a type of nutrition in which organism feed on dead and decaying matter and this type of nutrition is present in fungi third type is parasitic mode of nutrition so parasites are the organism that either live inside or outside the body of other organism which are known as host for that organism and derive their nutrition from it and this type of nutrition is present in cascuta which is a plant parasite ticks which are animal parasite etc now we are going to discuss how do heterotrophic organism obtain their food and we will discuss this in unicellular organism first as we all know that unicellular organism are made up of single cell or single celled organism are known as unicellular organism like amoeba paramecium so first we will discuss this in amoeba as we all know that body surface of amoeba is irregular or shape of amoeba is irregular because of the presence of finger like projections over its body surface and these projections are known as pseudopodia pseudopodia are extension of cell membrane so with the help of pseudopodia amoeba captures food particle or its prey then with the help of the pseudopodia amoeba takes a in food particle inside the food vacuole now in food vacuole digestion of food takes place after digestion diffusion of simple substances in cytoplasm occurs and the food that is left undigested is moved out of the cell through their general body surface and from here it is thrown out of the body so here in the diagram you can see that first diagram there is a amoeba and food particle amoeba bears finger like projections which are termed as pseudopodia so with the help of pseudopodia amoeba engulfs the food particle inside food vacuole and in food vacuole digestion of that food material takes place and after digestion uh, absorption and then when left out is excreted out through general body surface in same manner next we will study nutrition in paramecium as we all know that paramecium the cell surface is uh, made up of numerous cilia or paramecium bears numerous cilia over its body surface and cilia are uh, hair like structures so with the help of cilia paramecium captures the food particle and from here through general body surface it enters 
inside the body in food vacuole then as like as amoeba in paramecium to digestion of uh, food particles takes place inside the cell after digestion absorption occurs and from here the left out is excreted out of the body through general body surface now we are going to study heterotopic mode of nutrition in multicellular organism and we all know that multicellular organism are made up of more than two cells so here we will discuss nutrition in human beings and human have organ grade of body organization so in human nutrition completes with the help of digestive system and digestive system is composed of elementary canal and its associated glands the food that we eat is composed of five components and these are carbohydrate fat and protein and also vitamin minerals and water so three components that are carbohydrate fat and protein need to be digested while vitamin mineral and water is absorbed as it is so all the process of digestion is carried out only for digesting carbohydrate fat and protein so in human digestion completes with the help of following steps and these are number 1 ingestion number 2 digestion number 3 absorption number 4 assimilation and number 5 ejection so first we will discuss ingestion ingestion is a process by which food is taken in or taking in of food is known as ingestion then digestion so by the process of digestion complex molecules are broken down into simpler forms or macro molecule of food are broken down into micro molecule with the help of digestion then absorption the digested materials are absorbed in absorption then assimilation assimilation is the process by which the absorbed molecule of the food are transported to the cells that need it then ejection ejection is the process by which undigested components of the food are excreted out of the body it is also known as defecation now we are going to study the structure of alimentary canal alimentary canal starts from mouth and mouth is the aperture that leads to the buccal cavity at above and below the buccal cavity salivary glands are present which are marked with the help of green color in this diagram then buccal cavity leads to oesophagus oesophagus is a tube like structure which leads to stomach and stomach is a c shaped bag like structure and at the right hand side of stomach uh, another bag like structure is present which is represented with the help of red color in the diagram and it is liver then you can see there is a balloon like structure which is marked with green color is hanging from liver it is gall bladder then at the left hand side of the stomach there is a leaf like structure which is represented with yellow color in the diagram it is pancreas then stomach leads to intestine in the diagram yellow colored coil like structure represents small intestine and small intestine is surrounded by a pink colored pipe which is thicker than that of the small intestine it is large intestine large intestine leads to rectum and rectum is the terminal end of alimentary canal so alimentary canal starts from the mouth and terminates to the anus now we are going to study mechanism of digestion so digestion starts from mouth or buccal cavity inside mouth or buccal cavity tongue teeth and salivary glands are present there are three types of salivary glands submandibular sublingual and parotid teeth helps in grinding and chewing of food tongue helps in rotating mixing and tasting of food tongue also helps in swallowing or pushing down of the food 
saliva which is secreted by salivary glands is basic in nature so it kills the microbes that are entered along with the food saliva also contains enzyme known as salivary amylase or ptyalin that helps in breakdown of complex polysaccharide to disaccharide now food is termed as bolus and it is transferred to oesophagus in oesophagus food moves with the help of peristaltic movement peristaltic movement are the contraction and expansion of muscles of oesophagus in oesophagus no digestion of food takes place because there no digestive enzyme is present after that at the end of oesophagus and opening of mouth there is a sphincter is present and it is known as the oesophageal sphincter which prevents the food from being regurgitated so food once enters the stomach cannot pass through next after that food enters to stomach here gastric glands are present that secretes the gastric juice the shape of stomach is c or j shaped and it is a bag like structure that is divided into three parts cardiac fundic and pyloric in stomach linings chief cells are present and these cells secrete hcl the function of hcl is to kill microbes and to activate inactive enzyme pepsinogen to pepsin the mucus present in stomach is secreted by mucus neck cells and this mucus protects the stomach linings from the damaging effect of hcl the pepsin is protein digesting enzyme present in stomach so it digests protein and convert it to peptide and peptones casein is the another enzyme that digests the milk protein and it is present only in infants now food enters to small intestine passing through a sphincter known as sphincter of odi or pyloric sphincter the function of this sphincter is to transfer food in smaller quantities so that it could be neutralized with the uh, help of intestinal juice because the food that is uh, transported from the stomach carries very acidic ph that is added by hcl present in the stomach so in intestine before entering it is neutralized with the help of intestinal juice which is alkaline in nature then intestine or small intestine is divided into three parts duodenum jejunum and ileum in intestine digestion is fixed it means here complete digestion of food takes place so carbohydrates are broken down into simplest form glucose fats are broken down into fatty acid and glycerol and proteins are broken down into smallest form amino acids now the duodenum of a small intestine receives bile juice from liver and pancreatic juice from pancreas through a common opening or common duct known as hepatopancreatic duct bile juice contains enzyme lipase that helps in the digestion or breakdown of fat to fatty acids and glycerols or larger fat globules to smaller fat globules and this process of fat digestion is known as emulsification next pancreatic juice contains enzyme trypsin that helps in the breakdown of peptides into amino acids so protein and peptides are broken down into amino acid with the help of trypsin and fat is broken down into fatty acid and glycerol with the help of lipase now as you can see in the diagram intestine is divided into two parts small intestine and large intestine small intestine is further subdivided into three parts and these are uh, duodenum jejunum and ileum and then large intestine is divided into three parts these are 
cecum, colon and rectum. So, in a small intestine, digested materials are absorbed at its later or at its terminal end. So, for easy absorption, small intestine bears many finger-like projections and these are known as villi. Villi are made up of brush border epithelium. So, the absorption rate increases by many folds. In this way, absorption of food material takes place. After that, the undigested material is passed to the large intestine. So, from large intestine, it is transported to the end of the intestine, it is rectum. And from rectum, it is excreted out of the body through anus. That's all about digestion.